Hi, Melita. Hello. How are you? Where is everybody? Hey Kelly. Where is everyone? Well, I'm gonna wait two more minutes and get started. I know weather is really nice outside. I'm just gonna start since it's already 2 11. Hello, my name is Peter Park, and I'm this adaptive and Paralympic sports coordinator for the Center for Individuals with Physical Challenges. Today, I was gonna talk about how do you measure a wheelchair, but then my computer camera is not working, so it's kind of hard to maneuver around with my phone and me and try to say it all at the same time. So, we're gonna change the subject and talk about how do you train and setting goals. So Pam asked last week about how do you set your goals. So I'm going to talk a little, about, a little bit about setting goals in sports and how do you achieve your goals. So the way I, I from a personal experience, when I teach my athletes, I teach him to basically 
an acronym is SMART. I call it the SMART, or that's what I learned. S M A R T. S is, stands for specific. M stands for measurable. A stands for attainable. R stands for relevant. T stands for time based. So those are the steps that I usually tell my athletes to kind of look over and try to evaluate what you want to do and what you want to achieve. So for first, S is specific. Hey Margie, so having a specific goal is more effective than improve, more effective in improving performance than the general goals, which means, well, I'm just gonna do my best to then try to see what I could do. So which means that instead of just going out and just doing your best, you set, say, if you're, if you wanna start running, if your goal is to run a 5k which is about three miles then instead of going well i'm gonna go out there today and just run as hard as i can until i'm tired and i'm gonna come home which does help you out but there's no specific planning so it's better for example it's better to have today i'm gonna go out and run half a mile and take 30 second rest or take whatever minute rest and then run a half a mile. So having something specific like that, it's helpful. So, and it helps you also concentrate and focus on what you're doing. So have somewhat of a plan of what you want to do that day. First is very important. Second is measurable. So goals, goals must be able to be measured at the end. And if the goal cannot be measured, then like, how can you know how much you're improving or how much progress you're making? So it is good to have something to measure. And give me a minute, please. My computer is kind of freezing up. And next one is adjustable goal setting is dynamic process you need to be ready to adapt and change adapt to change alter your goals so you still have to be flexible and adjustable sometimes you think you're doing everything right and you set your goal say i'm starting in january and my i want to meet my goal by june and you have all these things that set up but then it's not gonna necessarily go as you want it to or you plan because how you train, sometimes you can't train or your body's just too tired or sometimes you think you could do more and you kind of tire yourself out, which kind of sets you back and it kind of affects your next day training. So it is, it is, it is very important to be flexible to say, hey, I'm really tired today and my pain is kind of not tolerable. Then instead of just going, well, I have training set for tomorrow, so I'm just gonna take the pain and go out and train. It's best to just take that day off and say, hey, my body is telling me to take a day off instead of following my schedule that's already laid out. I'm just gonna step back and say, hey, so I'm gonna take this day off and then train tomorrow so that I could have more energy and have a, be have a better training session. So that is a very important thing to have. So that's, and also you need that to make improvement because if you are just keep going up and up and up harder and harder and harder, at some point your body's gonna give out and just tell you like, hey, what are you doing? You need to rest, get some sleep, eat properly, and then come back next time and do the train all over again with same intensity. <laughs> So it is good to have a goal written down so you know where you need to be and you have something to look forward to. And one one thing that's very important that I tell my athletes or even anybody that's doing something from the beginning is having a very realistic goal. Like I see a lot of the mistakes our athletes are making is like, I was a good athlete before I got injured. And 
I knew I knew how to run. I was running this time, this time. I was college runner, but then now you're injured. So it's not the same body that you had, and it, everything's gonna be different. You're gonna have to learn how to walk or run again. So the goal is gonna be completely different. And now I kind of lost. So having a realistic goal is very important. So like I said, just to run, if we go by the three miles, say I want to run a 5K in six months, having something like, I'm going to start with running half mile because this is the very beginning phase and try to work up to three miles within six months, which seems like something that might be very easy to attain for some people, but there's nothing that's gonna take from day one to six months in a short period of time. There's no shortcut to it, so it's having something very realistic. If you're a beginning runner, having something like 5K is a pretty realistic goal. If you're a mediocre runner, or if you ran a 5K or 10K before, then setting like half a marathon would be a very realistic goal. For a first time runner, or I'm, I'm just going by runner because that's something that I'm very familiar with, so, if you're a first time runner, say, hey, I'm gonna run a marathon in six months, which could be done, but is it realistic? Which, when you haven't ran a 5K or 10K or half a marathon, so it's really not realistic. You can't just jump into a deep water in the middle of the ocean and say, hey, I'm gonna learn how to swim, which there's pretty good probability that you're going to fail. And We'll talk about failing some other time, which is not the, it's, which will help you in the wrong run also. But we'll talk about that some other time. So having a realistic goal is, that's something that I would talk to your coach or somebody who is training you to say, hey, what is my realistic goal that I want, I could attain? And your coach or somebody that at the center, you could ask, me or somebody in fitness center and ask for guidance and they could direct you to the right direction and next is i think it was time having a sp so every goal should have a specific time frame so setting a realistic goal and having a time frame is also very important and having a deadline is also very important because if you don't have a deadline, then there's nothing you could, you're not really working towards something. So if you're having, I'm just going to train from now to six months to get healthy, but like what is, how healthy do you want to get? Like, or how far do you want to run? Or how far would you like to able to walk? So having something that's more realistic is, and something that have a deadline that's specifically like certain date that you can meet that will help you meet your goals in the long run. I know it's really, really hard to set a goal and to get to the end of it because it takes a long process, a lot of patience, a lot of effort, and a lot of spending time. But just by going through all this, just something very small, the steps that I told you, and just start from something slow. If you're living next to the center, I know there's a pretty big parking lot that you could go up and down and there's a pretty big hill, there's a small hill and there's a long gradual hill or just going around the parking lot pushing one lap and just set a goal, say I want to be able to push 20 laps consecutively without exhausting myself, then try to work for that or if you want to be able to be climbing 10 times in a row, then try to work for that. But once we have the center open, and if you have a specific goal that you want to meet, all the staff is available for you to help, available to help you guys. And we could help you set the goal that's realistic, and we could set the timeline, and we could give you a proper training and tools and equipment to get you to where you need to be. And I know right now the time is really hard to do everything on your own, but try to stay active as possible and just try to set something that's a goal that's pretty small from the beginning. Just go 
and but set a time and set a schedule that you could do it every day or every two days or every three days but set a time of the day and try to get out or try to keep that time that you promised to yourself to stay active well that's all the stuff i have about training and is there any questions that you would like to ask Hi, Allison. Well, Pam asked questions last week, which I could not answer. So I'm going to answer some questions. Hey, Kelly. So let's see. Yeah, it's easier to remember, just smart. I learned it from my old coach because I had a hard time setting goals and I was everywhere and not improving and still working my butt off but not getting anywhere and I had to have a specific counseling with my coach and try to get my head straight and get my goals straight and to see what how much improvement I could make or what I could do to improve myself and this helped me out a lot. So Pam has asked about how to hire someone to do a personal training. So there are numerous ways to do it. If you have money to do it, you could go out and hire somebody that's out in the community. Or you could also, since you are the, you are the member of the center, you could ask one of us. I know the fitness instructors have training that could, they could give you. and like the physical training or strength training or endurance training that they could give you and if you want to get into specific sports then i could give you something to start with and we could keep track of things to to see how you're progressing and to meet your goal so if you're at the center and once we do op open it back up and if you want to improve on your physical fitness or a sports come let us know and we could try to help you out Kelly just asked, what is SMART? Kelly, you might just have to go back and look at it. It's, it's part of goal setting. SMART is... Yeah, it's... Anyways, well, that is all I have for now today and next Monday we will talk about wheelchair measurements and the benefits of having different positions in a sports chair and hopefully I could get this camera situated next week and if you have any more questions and concerns and want to talk about different sports or any other topics that you would like to talk about please leave a comment and I will try to talk about it as we go on and also I will talk about a little bit of cycling next week and how to change gears and how do you properly ride when you're out and out and about and we will go through those two things next week wheelchair measurement and a little bit of cycling so thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys next Monday Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.